almost speechless, except not quite. And what can only be described as a complete free fall for the Biden administration, once hailed as one of the most controlled and moderated in history, and we now know why, is now better compared to a group of prepubescent teenagers lined up outside a Taylor Swift concert high on Pop Rocks and Pepsi because it's fallen into complete anarchy. Now that the dike has been released, it's flooding information everywhere. Information the White House hoped that would never come out. Disaster after disaster, point after point, pouring out all over the White House lawn, into the press room, and anarchy ensues when Corinne Jean-Pierre says something she should never have uttered. An admission so astounding that it will keep you awake at night. And that is only a portion of this story I'm going to bring you here in just a couple minutes. Now, before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure your bell is checked so you're alerted to my upcoming broadcast. Your comments, shares, always appreciated, but I need your support to continue on. It is truly the only way this news can come to you. I have no big backers nor sponsors because, frankly, I want the message to be mine. And that's why we created Restricted Republic. Also, with no money but our own audience-funded news. That means a lot in today's world because it's the news you get with no one else controlling it except for Lisa and I. Right now, I'd like you to go there today, RestrictedRepublic.com, your means of supporting me. Use discount code INDEPENDENCE at monthly checkout. Again, INDEPENDENCE at monthly checkout and get $3.99 a month for two years. Only $3.99 for Lisa Haven and me, all our material, no matter where we broadcast it, and the daily exclusive content community page and everything else you can only get at RestrictedRepublic.com. Dot com monthly checkout discount code independence three ninety nine a month for two years plus fourteen days for free simply to check out the platform and by the way cancel anytime you wish but now let's get back to this broadcast so we're going to leave Taylor Swift and all her Swifties to themselves because there's far more embarrassing things to present Monday and Tuesday only added fuel to the burning flames consuming the White House faster than Whoopi Goldberg embarrassing herself in front of a major audience, which is scary. Huh, her audience of the poo, I, I mean the view, but that comment will make sense here in just one minute. I don't care if he's pooped his pants. <laughs> I don't care if he can't put a sentence together. So yeah, I have poopy days oh. all the time. All the I step in so much poo you can't even imagine. <laughs> I'm not sure if there's anything left to say. Whoopi said it all for herself. It's astounding how they attempt to even justify, except all they want is power, control. All she cares about is that Trump never gets in. But you see, this was a trifecta of disasters that occurred over the last two days. This disaster, I hope most of you recognize it, the Gaza Pier, one of the most costly publicity stunts in history. That's what it will go down as. One of the most embarrassing and expensive publicity stunts in recent history, the Pentagon's Gaza Humanitarian Pier Project is now facing its final blow. It's going away, folks. The pier intended to deliver humanitarian aid to Gaza has been plagued by constant repairs and will soon be dismantled permanently. Why? Well, let's go through the amazing list of achievements of this pier. And they don't include the alleged delivery of the 20 million pounds of food to Gaza because, frankly, I don't trust any numbers that come out of the government, nor should you. On May 25th, the pier was damaged by, well, seas and high winds. The seat it is in and high winds they hadn't predicted would damage the pier, but let's move on. So they removed it for repairs. June 7th, finally reconnected after a couple weeks. June 14th, inclement weather leads to pier's removal 
again. Days later, it's brought back repaired June 28th. Heavy seas result in removal again. Well, now it's going to be permanent removal. Out of commission again for nearly a couple weeks, to say the very least. U.S. built pier will be put back in Gaza for several days to move aid, then permanently removed. This on the Associated Press. Persistent high seas and poor weather conditions led to frequent disruptions and extensive damage. Critics argued that the land routes could have been more effective for aid delivery, but of course, the Biden administration and Democrats want to give a show of force. Critics argued that land routes again would have been more precise, but we skipped right by those. Pointing out the project was a costly endeavor driven by political pressure rather than practicality or usefulness or longevity. So in short, what you just witnessed in the pier, it will go down as one of history's costliest publicity stunts, plain and simple. Glad the Democrats feel better about themselves by spending our hard-earned money in our tax dollars on their failed virtue signal project. Another failed virtue signal project of many in the Biden administration, but not to be outdone and not to be outdone by this. Well, I'll just put it on silent for a moment so you can watch the pier just dismantling itself. Not to be outdone, however. The Wall Street Journal pulls out the Biden bulldozer to completely bury the administration in a pile of its own decrepit filth. Beyond the pier, of course. In this article, titled, How Biden's Inner Circle Worked to Keep Signs of Aging Under Wraps, aides kept a tight rein on the presidential travel plans, news conferences, public appearance, and meetings with donors while Biden stumbles, stumbles became increasingly obvious. No, I'm not making it up. It's all right there in their headline. It's lengthy, but I guess the amount of stumbles have become more lengthy now, haven't they? So they reveal for over a year, we know it's longer than that, White House advisors have aggressively managed President Biden's schedule to minimize signs of aging, as they state. His daily itinerary has been limited, and unscripted interactions with the public have been reduced, or if not all but eliminated. The cautious approach has led to questions about Biden's mental acuity particularly after a poor debate performance last month that we've talked about multiple times. It's done even as most ardent supporters. Well, remember, once those donors and supporters are gone, so is President Biden. Donors and lawmakers are now openly expressing concerns about Biden's fitness for a second term, feeling misled by reassurances from his top advisors. But to add insult to injury, the story gets even worse. When they reveal Biden has a stand-in, a.k.a. Antony Lincoln, I'll read this little foray here because I think it's rather important, and I quote. Lawmakers of both parties say they don't get enough face time with the president. Biden took almost a week to call Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer after debate. He's been busy. He's resting up. A White House official said the president has spoken at at least 20 lawmakers since the debate. Great number. Good work there, Joe. Biden teams refuse requests by Republican House leaders to meet with the president, instead offering conversations with senior White House aides. Biden has had few smaller meetings with lawmakers. As his term has gone on, visitor logs show he's closing his inner circle. Less and less people are allowed around him because more and more people would then know what you actually have. And we sure hate to admit it, especially when it comes to the last story of the group. Something that will keep you awake at night, I promise. Now, German officials, aware of Biden's fatigue at night, sought to accommodate the president by planning a June 2022 event with the German chancellor in the early evening. Everyone in the world knows our president falls asleep before 8 p.m. I think that was according to him, 8 p.m. or so. He's far better before that. So they're starting to accommodate his schedule. Don't worry about how important things are. We're going to accommodate his schedule. So at the soiree, Biden didn't show up. Surprising the chancellor and his aides, officials said. Instead, Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived and announced that Biden had to go to bed, according to two people that were there. His stand-in announced the president of the United States in front of foreign dignitaries. Couldn't make it because, well, Grandpa B had to go night-night. Don't worry about international policy, foreign policy, or just professional courtesy. No, old Joe chose to count his sheep in the warm embrace of a security blanket that has become his, well, faux Oval Office, to say the very least. Proud moment in U.S. history. They just keep stacking up, don't they? Of course, 
White House denies that account. Put it on record. But then the explosive revelation of the night comes out. Literally and figuratively. Embarrassment gives way to one of the most chilling and horrific statements ever given by a White House press secretary. I can't believe it was even said. As we all know, the White House's handling of concerns about Biden's cognitive abilities has been a point of contention. During a recent press conference, Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre was pressed about Biden's capacity to respond to emergencies such as a potential nuclear threat. Pretty important. And here, unproudly, is her statement. He's, he's sharp as before 8 p.m. So say that the Pentagon at some point picks up an incoming nuke. It's 11 p.m. Who do you call? The First Lady? He has a team that uh, lets him know of any of any news that is pertinent and important to the American people. Uh, he has someone or that is decided, obviously, with his National Security Council on who uh, gets the He's got a guy. Hey, Joe, nukes inbound. Uh, you can't talk to Joe. He's sleeping. You got to talk to his guy. He's got a guy. I don't know if you realize the significance of that statement. So let me go a little deeper. John Pierre confirms that Joe Biden is not the first person contacted in, well, a nuclear bomb scenario. No, I can't believe I'm actually saying that out loud. Let's be very, very clear here. According to this article by Business Insider, there is a series of events that occur when somebody launches a nuclear bomb at us. There is no more important concern if a president does not have the ability to deal with this, the president can't be in power. Plain and simple. Why do you think they're going to block any diagnoses that could prove that he's unable to deal with this? So let's read the scenario. If you take the U.S. government, just it can take the U.S. government just minutes to launch a nuclear weapon. Here's how it would work. The president has the sole authority to call for a nuclear strike. Once the call is made, a series of critical steps follow. The president first meets with top military advisors. The meeting would take place in the Situation Room. If the president is traveling, a call is made on a secure line. If the president still wants to go through the strike, the order is verified. To authenticate the order, a challenge code is read to the president, usually two phonetic letters like Delta Echo or something along the way. The president then receives the biscuit, a laminated card that's always near the president, or his guy maybe, who knows. The biscuit has matching response to the challenge code. The Pentagon then broadcasts the encoded message to the crews, and lo and behold, things move forward. So let me put it more simply. The U.S. president has sole authority for the use of U.S. nuclear arsenal. This authority is inherent in his constitutional role as commander-in-chief. The president can seek counsel from his advisors. Those advisors are then required to transmit and implement the orders. But to do that, the president would have to be the first one alerted, not his guy. What if the guy or contact is compromised? What if it's a foreign agent, let's say? What if a U.S. security has been breached? We see how well we're doing right now, and they just simply decide not to wake up old Joe. Hey, you know, he's sleeping like a little baby. Why, why are we going to bother him? Look at him, he's, he's so peaceful. I mean, look at him, he's so clear right now. For five additional strategic air defense systems. It, it, it's, as, it's as clear as mud to me, too. But this is what we're dealing with. The show's over, the curtain's been lifted. The revelation has fueled further concerns and worries about the president's ability to effectively lead the nation in time of crisis. But don't worry, folks. Biden chimed in with what I just read you. The five or something like that. Now, of course, we could piece together what he meant, but you should never have to piece together what a president said. These stories collectively paint a picture of an administration that has completely lost control of any Joe's okay narrative. That's gone. That ship has sailed. In the face of rapidly escalating chaos and much well-deserved, deeply needed scrutiny, finally, from the costly failure of the Gaza Pier to the increasing concerns of President Biden's cognitive health to now 
one of the most serious catastrophic consequences that could ever occur. The state of our union is very, very broken. The administration challenges continue. Chaos has ensued. The White House is in anarchy. Everyone's running, but nobody's doing anything once again to lead this great nation. And that, my friends, in all the levity I may attempt to bring to these very tough broadcasts, is the root cause of what we're watching that needs to be remedied immediately if we ever hope to become and remain stable as the great republic of the United States of America. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. Continue your support. It is so needed right now as Lisa and I are battling against every censorship mechanism that can possibly exist because they don't want you getting this plain black and white truth because this is how easy news actually is. It doesn't need to be difficult. The answers are always right before your very eyes. I love you all. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out.